Well, today is a special day for me. After three or four videos, I guess this is the fourth video, we finally get to finish this little pedestal table. So today, we're going to start off with the bits and pieces, and we're going to put everything together. We're going to be turning, our big feature today is we're actually going to be turning this column, uh, and we start off with a six-sided hexagon column and we're going to turn that today then we're going to do some make some fittings uh, so that we have something to mount the top to and then of course we'll glue it all together so stay with us I'm Colin Kanat for Woodwork Web watch how this table comes together so this is the column that we made last time and we did the sliding dovetails and today we're going to be working on the lathe and we're going to make a decorative column. Now we could leave this the way it is. It looks fine the way it is, but it gives us another opportunity to do something a little bit more unique with this. So today we're going to be putting this on the lathe and I don't have a specific pattern. I have an idea in my head what I want to do with it. We're not going to get crazy fancy here. We're just going to make something a little bit more elegant than what this is. So let's put this on the lathe. Before we do that, let's take a minute and go over some of the lathe parts because I know there's a lot of you who've asked about working with a lathe and today we'll just do a very rudimentary introduction to the lathe and the different parts. Whether your lathe is big or small, they all have the same components. Let's start with this end and work our way to this side. This is called the tail stock and it moves back and forth and it locks in this case with a little lever at the back here and on the tail stock there's something called a dead center this is the dead center and it spins and what happens is wood is put on here and it will spin freely because it's going to be driven by the other side but this is also adjustable so that you can move this back and forth and make it uh, drive it into the wood and then of course there's a lock. This item here is called the tool rest and we're looking at the lathe from where you would normally stand so the tool will sit on here and will go into the material like that. Now the tool rest can move back and forth from side to side and even up and down and you, you will constantly be adjusting the tool rest. Now this is the business end of the lathe normally called the headstock and in it consists of something called a live center. So the live center is a tapered bit that fits into the headstock and you can see that it's got some little flanges and a little center point on it and the purpose of that is to drive the wood into this and then when it spins this is what drives the entire wood to spin on the lathe. Now on the headstock of a lathe there's something that will adjust the speed of the lathe and in this case this little cover comes off and it reveals a system of belts in here and there's a little switch down here, a little lever down here and there's the lever right there and when you release this knob here it allows you to lift the motor up just enough so that you can move these belts from pulley to pulley and inside there's corresponding pulleys down below inside here so you need to move it at the top and at the bottom and that does a, a major adjustment of the speed that you want to work with and that's how a lot of way lathes work is by moving belts from pulley to pulley now one last feature about the headstock I mentioned that this bit is tapered and when you push that in there it gets jammed in there when it's spinning because there's pressure put on the wood like that and sometimes they get stuck in there after you take the wood off and all lathes come with a little piece of bar like that that you can just tap and that live center will come out just like that 
Now you can do basically two things on lathes. You can do spindle turning, which is what we showed you the first with the first bit, but you could also do bowl turning. And if you were turning a bowl or something similar, in that case, you would use uh, a chuck like this. And it has four screw holes. You would screw that to the wood that you wanted to turn, then mount that on the lathe like that. And that would be how you would turn a bowl. You could also use an adjustable chuck that looks like this and it also fits on there and you can adjust the size of the bite here by moving this back and forth and in this case you would be using this probably for bowl turning as well in most cases and in rather than having it fastened with screws in this case you would have to pre-turn something that would fit into the the jaws of that chuck now let's talk very quickly about tools and we're not going to use a lot of different tools on this we're going to keep it very simple uh, the first one that I'm showing you is something called a roughing gouge and you can see how it's concave like this and we'll use that to take the the column down to size this is called a spindle gouge basically the same thing but now it's a, a much narrower um, little U-shaped curve in the middle. Uh, this is called a beading tool and a beading tool is something for making sort of a round, uh, a round circular um, cut on a, on a spindle. And, and the last one looks very similar to a beading tool but it's called a cutoff tool and the difference is you can see that the the, be, the cutoff tool on this side is much narrower uh, and the beading tool is quite a bit uh, thicker. The next thing we need to do now is mount our wood on the lathe and I've taken some extra care to make sure I've got as close to the center of this column as possible and I've marked that and now I just need to put this live center on this end and the dead center will go on this end and we'll check that with our tool rest in place all the way along to make sure that this is as as lined up as we possibly can get it. Now before we start the lathe up we want to do a couple of things. We first of all want to set the tool rest and we want it to be just about center of where the the spindle is, where the, our column is in the lathe. The next thing we want to do is check the distance and we we like to get the tool rest as close to the material as we can um, but we want to spin it to make sure that it's not that it's not bumping up against any part of our column and that looks pretty good so we're actually ready to start nice and round through the middle and of course where the uh, legs go it, there's a nice uh, sort of a tapering effect and also where the top is going to go on uh, we're going to have some wood coming out here some supporting um, pieces coming out here so we don't want to go any further up than that as well so
Now for sanding, we use a, a sandpaper, something with a, a nice cloth back on it, uh, and that will bend and get around all of the spindle parts. So there's my little bit of Osmo and my little application pad. And all we do now is turn the lathe on and just touch it. And you can see how it just goes on just like just like magic. Now I'm going to put two or three coats on and I'm going to leave this on the lathe as long as I'm putting this, these uh, coats on. So, and I'm not going to show you every coat because they all go on the same way as this. There's our two top pieces and they're still a little bit snug. That's a nice tight fit. Now I need to put these on top of the pedestal and measure that. I'm just finishing putting some screws underneath and you can see that I've created a slot in that one and that's to compensate for any movement that there might be. And I don't put them real tight, I just snug them down. And now we can put that on top of the pedestal base. Well, I got a little bit carried away earlier on, and I ended up gluing the legs on. Uh, but we still have to do a little bit of finishing, and this should just slip right on there. There it is. Okay, and that's our little pedestal table. Now I still need to do a little bit of finishing, so I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll come back. We really only have to do the legs and the top, so we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of finishing. Now I've sanded everything down nicely, and we just need to give our coat of Osmo to everything. And we put that on. If you haven't seen that, you might want to go and have a look at that video on Osmo. It's our our favorite our favorite finishing product around here and it just takes a little bit of rubbing in and this is going to be a little bit time consuming so we're not going to make you sit through the entire thing uh, but we just want you to see how this is applied. You don't spray it on, you don't brush it on, uh, you use this uh, little fine application well, we finally get to finish our little three-legged pedestal table. And at 23, 24 inches, it's a perfect height for a little side table, or you could even use it as a plant stand. We finished it with three coats of Osmo, and you can see how that book-matched uh, oak on the top, it, uh, the Osmo just sort of brings it to life. It's a lovely finish. We got to use lots of different techniques on this table. Of course, we used the router circle jig, and then we put a, a Roman OG on it uh, to give it a nice decorative side. We made a six-sided column on the table saw, and then we got to turn that column. We also used sliding dovetails for the feet, and uh, put that all together. So there's lots of different techniques that you can use to make a table like this. These little tables are not that common, so you could make something like this, uh, and that's something that would really show off your woodworking expertise because there's lots of different techniques to make something like this. So that concludes this film. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. I finally got those right. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.